Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from definitely not the Khmer Score studio. I think this might be the strangest recording I've ever had. I mean, I recorded in a hotel closet before, but right now I'm recording in a car. So <laughs> I will be back to the studio at some point in the near future, but I am making things work right now. So please bear with me, especially if the audio is just a little bit off. Regardless, let's talk about a really interesting talk on this one because... Well, Mark Rosewater, Morrow the head designer at Wizards, had a blog post, or not a blog post, but a blog response. Let's jump into it. So, three Slugcat pilots, four, seven ornithopters, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but asked, I personally thought the amount of legends was notably lower, especially compared to sets like OTJ, and I'm fine with it, especially on a horror plane. It would kind of be, it would be kind of weird to have so many specific people alive there. That's a very good point. And then Mark Rosewater responded, We are consciously trying to lower legendary creatures in Premier set. So I actually jumped into the numbers. And okay, first up, I do want to say I agree. I mean, as we see from, from some of the comments, like, good, we had so many legends for so long that I started to go cross-eyed for a bit. I agree. And then it's still good, the rare ones for most color combinations, including the ones Commander decks. Good thing the main set doesn't have a high rarity BR, but there's a BR Valve on the Commander decks. I mean, yeah, there, there are, especially like when it comes to some of the like uncommon ones in the past, like when it started off like with Dominaria, like things were great with the uncommon commanders, and then they were like, oh, we're running out of, not running out of design space, but like seemingly putting either less effort in those or intentionally making commanders that really don't work or aren't intended to work. So, I mean, I definitely agree with this approach to lower the amount of legendary creatures. I, I would say for all sets would be great, but, you know, for premier sets, th that's a good start, essentially. I don't think that they're going to be lowering the amount for, say, universes beyond things because, well, they, you know, want to make those uh, companies happy. And that's the focus of magic, right, everyone? Regardless, I jumped into the numbers, essentially, and talked about, uh, you know, what, what kinds of sets have we seen so far? What trend are we seeing? And what can we expect in the future? Let's jump into those numbers, well, right now. So we're going to talk about, really quick, all right, Duskmorn. Duskmorn had 19 Commander cards. As you can see, set Duskmorn is Commander, not reprint. We're not talking about the Precons, although... In the precons recently, we have seen a trend where, you know, obviously you, this one just had, you know, four precons commanders or four precons, but only two commanders in each precon versus, you know, sometimes we have seen more and more of those. I think at one point we had like four commanders in a precon, which is absurd. So, yeah, we are getting to the point now where it seems like they have figured out a new formula going forward. Again, more specific you know, amounts of commanders, essentially. More specific uh, on what commanders do, so you're not just getting kind of like repeats of previous types in, in a sense, but also they can just focus it. So again, 19 commanders in the most recent one. The set before was Bloomboro. We saw 25. And again, uh, I think that for the most part, we got a good amount of, you know, commanders that aren't just kind of completely worthless. Like every kind of commander essentially that we saw in this set like had like a spot to it. Uh, there are some that are obviously weaker than others, but like there's none that are just like, hey, copy paste old commander and then do it worse, essentially, which we have definitely seen. And we will, I'll show you at some point. And then we go to OTJ. Now, OTJ is a different animal, and I'll talk about this at the end of this episode where I talk about the actual chart. But yeah, OTJ is a bit of a different animal because they did say it's like, I can't remember what they called it, but basically it's not like a, it, it was a set where it's like, okay, like we have a lot of different, like, just figures in it that are coming together like this is a story set where you know you have okay big thing happening here's all these different forces coming in and there you go so that's why it had a higher amount i mean again like how are how many are we gonna have it's still a premiere set yes but like how many of those kind of sets where we have a bunch of commanders coming in i mean with this one i just want to point out like okay doc arlock grizzle genius like this is a card where spells you cast for your graveyard costs or from exile costs to us cast plotting cards for your hand costs to less that that is a like unique thing to do it is a probably uncommon effect but it is not a useless commander which we have seen in the past when it comes to uncommon commanders so yeah we i again with this like more uh, but we also again see kind of on the other end like jolene no offense to jolene players out there but 
yeah, when you have so many commanders in a set, you're going to have like good ones, bad ones, and things in between. So yeah, it's kind of been shaky, especially with uncommon commanders. But again, when you limit it to, you know, with Duskmorn, where we had 19 and we had, I believe, two uncommon commanders. One was definitely more so for standard play or other formats with Atlanac because that has other cards that can get it out. But like we also saw Arabella, which is a really cool card. Again, like cool, awesome, amazing. One of my favorite commanders from the set and it's uncommon. Okay, moving on past this one again, we went from 19 to 25 to 41. We're going backwards in time right now. We have uh, Mirza Karlov Manor, 25 commanders in this set again. So like this kind of like, again, we had 19, the most recent one. I think this is the first time under 20 in a long, long, long time. And yeah, we've got around like 20 or so ish, it seems like recently. And uh, yeah, before that, we were at, um, oh goodness, this is just gonna, <laughs> the L LCI, it's Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It, it's gonna really, you know, like the, uh, the abbreviations are really gonna mess with me. We got 29 commanders. So again, on the higher end of that. And then we got, you know, 25 previously with Eldraine, Wilds of Eldraine. Then we've got 21 in the previous set before that. That's Aftermath, I believe, which is like a weird, uh, kind of doesn't count one. So, like, I'd say, like, throw that number out because, again, it was like a stapled on kind of set, essentially, which I think Outlaws had one as well, right, where they stapled that on. So maybe that's why Outlaws, you know, count is so high as well. Moving on. We've got 30 from Mom. <laughs> and then we've got, uh, yeah, around 28, looks like, from one. So, yeah, again, we had all what we want, or whatever that one is. We, there was a lot of Phyrexian sets in a row. <laughs> March of the Machine was mom. This one's, oh, goodness gracious, all what we want, or whatever it was. So, yeah, we got 28. So, it seems like we were around, like, the 30 mark for a while. Uh, moving on to 22 at uh, Brothers War, essentially, right? So, again, like, these kind of sets were kind of weird because they, it's also, like, a little block where they, again, like, went back to, like, okay, we've got, like, the same plane, multiple blocks, and they've kind of gone away from that. So it kind of also might be a data point to like, just take a second look at essentially. And then we go back a little bit further, 41 for Dominator United. Again, that's kind of more so like, oh, okay, everyone's coming together kind of set essentially. So you have just a lot. Again, we do see a good uncommon commander here as well, like LSO Core. But again, you also see other ones where it's like, oh, what, what were you, what were you doing with that? Like, Bortuk, Bone Rattle, like all the domain commanders. Yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, that, that, and again, like we will say like the, some of them are not intended for commander and that's okay. That being said, yeah, I, I like when they actually kind of have legendaries that are focused to be, again, legendary creatures and not just wasting the space. Like standard doesn't need 40 legendaries in it or, you know, each set essentially, right? The focus on bringing legendaries into magic these days is yes, commander. So make those legendaries good. Make those not like overpowered, whatever, but make the designs good. Next up, we got Streets of New Capanna, 19. So again, this was actually pretty low. And then we've got before that Neon Dynasty. So at uh, what, 32. So again, I feel like it used to be around 30 ish around that high end of 20. Now it's going toward the low end of 20. Let's quickly look at a chart. That will show us the commander's buy set. Yes, very fancy chart you will see. Now you do see those two spikes again with DMU and OTJ. I'd say we can kind of throw those out and just say like, all right, I think OTJ, right? They combined like their, like the vault one or whatever that was, which was basically aftermath. So if you see kind of just like the trend line, basically like around like 30 or so, kind of going down-ish this way, this way, this way, this way. And like, again, we're getting like, I don't know if 19 is going to be the normal, but I would say like low 20s is probably what we can expect in the future. I mean, things were getting, I, I only went back to Neon Dynasty, okay? If you go back a little bit further than that, things got really crazy again with like the, the year of Commander. It was like, everything's Commander, this, that, this, that, this, that. There's a lot of crazy things going on in Magic. It feels like things have finally calmed down a bit where they are kind of getting their bearings to them. Like they just went Commander crazy for a bit. And now they're like, okay, um... We figured out, well, the number of Planeswalkers we want in sets moving forward, basically, right, with one. Now we are figuring out the amount of commanders we kind of want in general in sets moving forward. And when it was overdoing it, you were kind of diluting it and making those commanders less special. But now I do think it's a bit more focused. Again, like, I think the 19 commanders we got in Duskmorn, they are each unique. Again, you have, like, one for, you know, another format like Atlanac like that. I, I mean, sure, some commander players might build around, like, a 9-9 trampler that can also draw you cards rarely. Uh, but also, like, being able to discard it, that's definitely, like, not what you want out of a commander because it's not really what, how it functions. You have to work really far around that to actually make that work, and it's not worth it. But, like, every other commander really kind of has its own space, 
actually functions well as a commander. And actually, I think the power levels of these commanders are closer than they have been in the past, too. So again, like I think that when you have, again, a more concentrated amount of commanders, you can actually do it better. You can do it a lot better than you have previously. I think wizards, again, they, they years and years and years ago, right? Like it was rare to see more than like 10 commanders in a set. And then things started steadily increasing. And then they went crazy in 2020, like just absolutely crazy in 2020 with, hey, oh, commander this, commander that, commander this, commander that. There's a million commanders coming out in the first Dominaria. They have like a lot of really good uncommon ones, but it seems like they kind of well, just like used up all their energy in those. <laughs> and there have been amazing commanders since then, yes. But like, I like this more concentrated version. It seems more focused. It doesn't seem distracted. It seems like you can bring in the flavor of the plane that you're on. You can bring in a lot of different cool elements. You can focus on the mechanics from that plane as well in the focus of that plane without just diluting the product. I feel like that's been one of the problems lately where it's just like there's a lot of dilution in Commander lately and it's just like copy paste but either slightly better or slightly worse versus actually innovating and doing some cool things. Again, we got some really cool ones in this set like Mind Skinner, amazing. Norin came back but like a different kind of Norin as well. You got like Marina Vendrell. Again, like hey, let's go into rooms. We got like, okay, rooms of concept. How do we build a command around this? We have one command that we're building around this concept. Cool, we got that. Arabella again, a commander that is uncommon but no, not, not at all. And I mean, it's uncommon ability, right? It's like, it's fairly at uncommon but it's a very unique commander. I tell you, I do like this direction. I'm glad that Wizards, I mean, got feedback on, you know, the amount of commanders is listening to the community. It seems like with that, maybe not so in, you know, universes beyond, but is making adjustments to try to make the game better in some ways. So I do think this is the right direction for Commander. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all this. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.